in the name of my ancestors. <sighs> Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program, known here on YouTube as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Uh, Angel Snub Number Seven. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Brothers and sisters, truth hurts. And many of y'all believe that you have truth. I am here to tell us that the real truth of which this ministry, excuse me, little tongue tied, the real truth of which this ministry represents hurts you even worse than your truth because it is the ultimate truth because it brings us and forces us to accept our reality and most of you are not in a real world you are living and you are believing in fantasy and fictions and delusions and I think and it's a possibility instead of just facing and accepting what you know of as real and what is real you don't have to debate about I believe this and I believe that it is common and it is a reality to all of us until the day that we are called back into the loin of this planet what makes the descendants of slaves what makes the black man and woman those who are from the continent of Africa what makes the original man the original woman what makes the family this particular human being what made them the world's most perfect slave other people they were experimented with and tried but nobody in the history of the human being was made and viewed and has become the world's most perfect slave brothers and sisters real truth has come to us and I want to and wish to and I am going to deliver you that answer that you don't want to hear because truth especially real truth hurts but it must be said for those who accept that truth you will come into a new mind which will develop new vision and it will take these who are the descendants of slaves born in America take you to another place it will take you up that mountain that Dr. Martin Luther King talked about that you and I would get there even though he himself would not or your refusal to accept the truth will keep you where you are right now no matter how much you scream black power no matter how many times that you get on a rug and do your salats no matter what you do you're going to remain a slave because you are doing and acting and behaving in the manner that puts you in this particular condition and you might say oh it was the racist white man that did this to us no he took advantage of your Achilles heel he took advantage of your weakness what is your weakness black man what is your weakness black woman what is the weakness and what is the Achilles heel of the original people of the planet the conquerors 
those who deal with us day in and day out, they have found out that your Achilles heel and your weakness is that you have a fear. We as a people, we have a fear of pain. We don't want to be hurt. We have a fear of the unknown. And since we have a fear of pain, and since we have a fear of the unknown, throughout the generations, we developed religion. And we developed what you call spirituality or ritual of the spirit, worship of the dead, worship of the unknown, in order for us to deal with our fear of pain, in order, of, in order to deal with our fear of death, in order to deal with our fear of that which we don't understand. In your spirituality, there is fear. You fear the ghosts. You fear the demons. You fear these creatures that you have conjured up within your so-called spirituality. The black man and woman, the descendants of slaves born in America, we come from a people, the original people. We come from a people that have a childlike mentality. Much like the person or the child given or pretend that they have an invisible imaginary friend. But you've taken it to the point where this type of childlike behavior, this childlike mentality is acceptable among so-called adults. What made the black people vulnerable to becoming a slave? Is that the conqueror and anybody that deal with us, they understand our obsession. Listen, we have an obsession with religion. We have an obsession with this spirituality, the worship of the dead, fear of pain. And so the only thing you have to do for us is to threaten us, crack a whip. And then we find solace. Not in ourselves. We find comfort in our make-believe imaginary friend in the spirit world. And you see this in Egypt. You see this in all types of African cultures. We have, we make these friends to protect us and save us from the unknown, from pain and suffering. Brothers and sisters, truth hurts. I know it do. But you have to understand what has happened to us. You will never be free as long as you fear pain, as long as you fear death, as long as you fear that which you don't understand, as long as you keep your mind in a childlike condition, as long as you continue to embrace a childlike condition mentality. If you are free, religion and spirituality cannot make you free because they keep you enslaved. They keep you under the bondage of another. You say in your religion, you say in your spirituality that you are a servant. I am here to serve God. If you serve God or if you serve a man, then you cannot be free. Servants cannot be free. Servants are under the tutelage of somebody else. When you become a slave, your life benefits somebody else. It does not benefit another. So if you live only for God, then you are a slave. Because your life is dedicated for the purpose and the happiness of somebody else. Something, somebody, some person, whatever. But you don't do nothing for yourself. If you wish to be truly free, then your life belongs to you. I can appreciate if your God exists, then I appreciate God that you brought me into being. I appreciate you, God, for doing this for me or doing that for me. And I will give you your honor, but I don't owe you nothing else because this life belongs to me. I don't bow down and serve nobody. 
You do something for me, I do something for you. We are equal because my life is just as valuable, just as great as anybody else. But for some reason, the descendants of slaves, the original people, always have felt that they are below themselves. There's always something else that they got to bow down to. Obsessed. You have become obsessed with bowing down to somebody. And so since you don't have a physical God to bow down to, you bow down to your make-believe gods, or you bow down to the racist pink people, or you bow down to somebody that has money, or somebody that has a gun in their hand. You're going to bow down to somebody. And that is your Achilles heel. You fear pain. You fear suffering. You fear that which you don't understand. You fear the unknown. And that what makes the black man and woman the most perfect slave. And then when they give you drugs and alcohol. And when you are fed other foolishness. That makes things even worse. Because the liquor, the drugs, the alcohol, the dancing, the excessive sex. All these things you become obsessed with because everything becomes a God to you and you easily bow down and worship the liquor bottle. You worship the porn star. You worship dope. Anything because that's your Achilles heel. You bow down to everything. Anything you want to serve. You don't see no value in yourself. You don't see that you also are of a greatness. That you are... Just as valuable as anything else that's in this life. That's why it was so easy, and that's why you and that's why you and I, as a people, we stay in a slave-like condition because we fear pain, we fear death, we fear suffering, we fear that which we don't understand, and what we don't understand, then we bring false understanding, we bring delusion and fantasy and spirituality. Just like a child would. And that's the reason why, brothers and sisters, the black man and woman was, have, and still is the world's most perfect slave. Jot down your comments. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Taliki Mira. And I'm sorry, some of you understand, but that's just, that's just it. This was and is your reality in the temple on earth. Peace.